His steadfast love never ceases. Good morning, everyone. I'm always so curious to know who would be listening to me today and when, when I do these midday prayers. I never quite know. Um, sometimes I wonder if I'm talking to myself, but th that's less nerve-wracking than thinking that I may be talking to someone um, Anyway, let's just move on. Happy Heritage Day to you. I hope you're enjoying whatever you're doing and, and having a lovely, relaxing time. Um, so today has, is really the culmination of uh, 24 hours of quite overwhelming emotional time for our family. Um, we've just produced um, a brand new granddaughter called Maisie Ray. And uh, sure, yeah, it's quite an emotional thing. Um, so uh, I was going to talk about Maisie Ray and about children, our, our heritage. And then whilst I was sort of working through the material, I thought, no, I am going to talk about love, um, the love of God as our heritage today. I want to bring a happy message, um, an encouraging message. Uh, there's so much in the Bible and especially in the prophets um, that uh, just talks doom and gloom about the heritage that God gave us as the Israelites, really, the land of Judah in the Old Testament um, and how it has been defiled and how they defiled it, how they didn't follow in God's way and, and worshipped false prophets. And despite everything that God did, they, they continued with, with that. Um, and yes, I know there is... Um, plenty of justification to talk about that this morning because we have defiled our land 
uh, we have failed God and many times, but you know, let's let's be encouraging, let's be uplifting. We have also not failed him at times. We have also served him well at times. And today, it's just on my heart to be grateful for God's heritage of love. And so I want to remind you, first of all, um, that in Romans 8, um, uh, Paul is talking to, or writing his letter to the Romans, addressing the Romans and the Christians in Rome. And he says, whoever has my commandments and keeps them, he it is who loves me. For I am sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depths, nor anything else in creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. So there, in um, comparison to the prophets of the Old Testament, um, a, a much more uplifting and encouraging message, which is, um, which, which, which I would rather share today, so that you go away feeling, perhaps a little bit walking on air, um, appreciating God's love for us. And going forward, especially, and every time someone opens their mouth on a, one of these uh, videos or sermons or homilies, it's, um, it's about these difficult times, it's about these strange times, it's about this new normal. And I say to you, live in the present. Live surrounded in God's love in the present. We don't really know whether it's a new normal or an old normal that we're going back to or whether there's doom and gloom in the future or whether God's going to actually make something wonderful out of everything that's happening because he usually does. Um, so I'm not going to talk about those strange times. <laughs> I'm just going to talk about now, today, and the love of God and our heritage from God. And to do that, I'm going to read to you from um, Psalm 36, from Nan Merrill's book, Praying the Psalms, which I think by now you know is a firm favorite. And I'm starting sort of um, about half a dozen verses down. And uh, the, the psalmist is talking about um, when, um, people who are ignorant of God who don't want to follow God's way. Don't worry, the message gets happy. <laughs> Would that they who don't love God knew that your steadfast love, O Holy One, extends, up to, extends to the heavens your faithfulness to all the world, in fact, to the universe. Your saving justice is like the mountains, firm and sure. Your judgments are like the mighty deep. Your love supports all of creation. Yes, your love consciousness is everlasting. How precious is your steadfast love, the heritage you have given us. O oh, companioning presence, we, your children, take refuge in the shadow of your wings. We feast on the abundance of Gaia, the earth. You invite us to drink from the living streams of life. For in you is the very source of life, and in your light do we see light. May your steadfast love endure to those who know you. Your saving grace to those who love truth and justice. 
protect us from the seeds of arrogance and the weeds of greed drive away. Open the hearts of those who live in the darkness, O oh beloved, that they might rise up and live in the light of oneness. Just a couple of things I want to pick up on here. There's this just lovely feeling in the beginning where I first started to read of God's steadfastness and love, which we sang about um, in the opening, um, being absolutely everywhere to those who would turn to him and walk in his way um, in everything he created. And if you read Genesis chapter 1, you will see God created everything, not just earth. But the universe, the stars, the sky, the planets, the sun, the moon, not just our world. His love is that great, that large, that all-encompassing. And maybe if we go to Mars one day, he'll be there. Well, not maybe he'll be there. Maybe if we go to Mars, he will definitely be there. <laughs> So we have a very precious heritage and love from, from, from God. And I just love this piece that says, we your children take refuge in the shadow of your wings. What could be more safer? It reminds me of um, a goose or a swan um, or a duck that has had uh, little babies and how they gather them up under their wings and you can't even see them. And I've often thought how lovely and warm and soft and safe it must be in there. And that's what God does for us. He gathers us in under the shadow of his wings. We feast on the abundance of the earth. You know, God, one of, the, um, one of my favorite um, writers is Cynthia Bourgeau and she emphasizes the abundance of God. So everything that God gives us, he gives us in abundance, whether that's love, mercy, grace, all the fruits of the spirit that I can never remember, joy. Um, he doesn't give he doesn't give us things in little bits, pardon me. Um, he gives us, gives us abundance, all that he has, and always. It does, it's not just for a temporary time. It's just that sometimes we can't see it or we turn away from it. It's always there. And he allows us to drink from the living streams of life. Such a lovely picture that is. And I read these scriptures and psalms, especially these ones in Meryl's book. The pictures that it conjures up in my mind are so beautiful. Psalmist says, when God is the very source of life and in your light, light do we see light? I don't know how many of you have read Eckhart Tolle's books. Wonderful writer, writer and Christian person. Um, and if you haven't read any of his books, I really recommend them. Um, you can find them on Amazon. There are some going at a very um, cheap rate. We're just good discounted rate on, on um, take a lot. Not because they're not selling, but because... Um, they were they were written in the early two thousands. In fact, the one one of his books, I'm not, I think it was um, the New Earth, was rated uh, by Oprah as his, as the best book. So I mean that must have sold millions. And he says Eckhart uh, Tolle tells us that we are the light of the world. We are not only the love of God, we are the light of the world because if God loves us, God is within us. God is not over there. He's here. 
peace in our hearts. Okay. So we are his love to the world and we are his light in the world. And we as his servants bring light to the places in the world that are dark. Okay. And that's pretty much what that psalm says. And I think that's um, very encouraging. Oh, it's more than encouraging. It's a gift. It's a blessing. It's a divine and sacred blessing to be loved by God. To be able to live our lives with the heritage that God, the heritage of love and light that God has given us. So, I would just like you to take a moment now. And I mean just a moment, just a few moments, maybe a minute or two, to just go into silence. Push thoughts out of your mind. If they come, then just, just, just push them away and try to focus for a few months minutes on the legacy of God's love in our lives. I'll start us and finish us with the gong like I usually do. I'm going to play us out with that lovely song um, called The Steadfast Love of the Lord Never Ceases. And I really pray with all my heart that you would just take a moment during the day to stop and remember in the quiet of the day, perhaps out in the garden. Think about or just reflect on in your heart, not in your head, 
in your heart. <laughs> that wonderful heritage of the love of Christ that we have been given. We have paid nothing in return. It is just God's glorious gift to us. So I ask God's blessing on you all. I pray that he will protect you, keep you well, keep you safe. Pray that you will fill your heart with his presence. And I pray that he will do the same for all those you love. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you.